In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to build your very own video editing computer. I'll be building a Ryzen rig with a $1,500 budget. Let's get rocking. Now, if you want to build a lower budget computer, I have actually created three separate parts lists in the description below. Now you can click those links and check out the different parts. And those each are a $750 build, a $1,000 build, and a $1,500 build. Now, if you'd like to follow along as you're building, go ahead and get those parts ordered and then come back to the video and start building. But if you already have your parts, then you're in the right place. Now, if you do make a purchase through any of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, this video is actually a part of a larger series that you can check out in the YouTube cards above in a playlist that I have created. And I also will be building an Intel version um, of a PC if you're curious about building an Intel versus building a Ryzen build. So if you're just joining me for the first time, I definitely recommend going back and watching the complete playlist. I walk you through how to pick the parts for a video editing PC build, how to prep for your build, what to do before you actually put it into your case, and then a step-by-step -step guide of putting it into your case. As you see over here, most of the build onto the motherboard is already complete. That's because I highly recommend testing your PC components before you ever put anything into the case. So if you are just joining for the first time, head back to the previous video and watch that so you can be caught up to speed with the rest of us who have already been working through these videos. So those of you who are back and ready to build into the case, welcome back, we're about to get started. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and dive in and put the motherboard into the case. First and foremost though, you just wanna simply de-static yourself by touching something metal on your case. People buy these like static bracelets and you can wear these around your wrist or your ankle, um, but as long as you de touch the case and de-static yourself, you will be fine building the parts. They used to be a little bit more unstable uh, back when things first started getting built, you know, components first started coming out, but now the components are much more stable. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is set the motherboard into the case then I'm going to look at the case and consider how I'm going to cable manage. So where my cables are going to go, where the different ports are that are going to be plugged in, where the power supply is, so on and so forth. You want to plan your cable management. So I'm going to get the motherboard in, then I'm going to kind of plan the cable management, and then I'm going to put the power supply into the build, and then we're going to wire it up. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so now that we have the case up on its side. I'm going to go ahead and grab the motherboard and you can actually pick it up from the CPU cooler. That's very helpful about installing the CPU cooler before it gives you something nice to grip on, onto. And then what you want to do is you want to come down here and slide this in. So it sets down. Now I'm going to turn this a little bit here. As you see, if you've not already added your plate for your ports, do that before this step. This one does not have a plate detached. It comes with a detached. So I didn't have to add that to my case. I just literally slide it in. So I'm going to work a little bit more to get that to slide in. It looks like it's just about there. I'm going to do a little bit more adjusting here. Go. And then once I get it in it shouldn't move it should be snug and in place all right that looks good all right so now that the motherboard is in place i'm going to go ahead and set all of the screws into the motherboard standoffs now as you saw i did not take the motherboard standoffs and input them myself they came built into the case some cases come with the standoffs separate in the box of hardware and then you go ahead and install those standoffs. Make sure you install them correctly. Make sure each one is in its correct place uh, because when you go and put your motherboard in, if they're not in the correct place, it could tilt your motherboard off access and throw off some of the connectivity. But mine already came installed. Lucky us. Thank you. Be quiet. So let's go ahead and secure the motherboard to the case. There's one.
So the motherboard has been mounted into the case, so now I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna put this power supply into the back and then start our cable management. So I'm gonna stand this up. All right, so we have the power supply here. We're gonna go ahead and take the back plate off of the case. And then we're gonna mount this back plate to the power supply. And then this plate mounts into the case. So that's how all this works. So you slide this over here like so. Grab my screws. It's kind of a weird system, but it, but it works really well once you get everything set up. All right, so I put those on pretty snug. Um, most stuff that you're gonna secure with just you know some good finger tension, but with those I try and make sure they're on there pretty pretty snug. All right, so now that it is all mounted to the plate, we wanna make sure that the power supply is mounted fan down, so that way it gets good airflow out of the bottom of the case. So I'm gonna slide these cables in here. go. Let's secure the back plate back onto the case like so. And that looks good. Okay. All right, now from here, like I've discussed earlier, we want to cable manage. We want to be aware of where our cables are going to run and how we're going to direct them. First and foremost, I want to talk about this little tiny cable back in there. So you see back in there, we have our, we have our CPU power. That's going to be a real booger to, to work on. So that one back there is one I really want to prioritize, is that CPU back there. So we want to run that cable up through here. But if you notice, this fan up top here is really getting in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this top shield off. I'm going to loosen these bolts up. We don't got to take them off. We just need to loosen them up so that way this can slide down the case and that'll give us a little bit more room up top to pull that cable through so let's do that right now so the cpu cable is going to go from the power supply down here it's going to come up and we're going to run it up through there all right so now we're going to run this cable up through here and if we can see that one there that looks like it's coming through pretty good see because we moved that fan out of the way it gave us a little bit more breathing room we want to make sure we have these cables nice and organized. All right, so now the trick is going to be to spin this cable around and plug it in. You have to give me a minute because this probably won't be easy, but we're doing good. All right, I think we've done it. I think we got it in there. So I'm gonna slide this back over and uh, secure that for the moment. We might have to loosen that up to work on some of the other cables. Uh, but for now, we got that cable and that is one of the most difficult ones in this entire build is getting that cable in. Okay, so next I'm gonna go ahead and feed the ATX cable in through the side here. Feed this one through here. This one will be much easier than our CPU cable. All right, so now we're gonna plug in our main ATX connector here. There we go. And next up is our VGA or PCIe cable, which will be connected to our GPU. 
All right, so now before we drop in the GPU, I'm gonna go ahead and wire some of these smaller little tiny ports down at the bottom uh, because there's more room. So let's start off with the HD audio. So I'm gonna wire this one down in through here. And this one's pretty easy to find. It's just the one with the awkward ports. There's that one awkward one missing. So you just gotta flip it over like so and plug it in. All right, there's number one. All right, the next port we're gonna plug in is one of the fans from the front panel. Swing this around here and plug that one in right there, like so. All right, now we have another fan we're gonna plug in. All right, the next one we're plugging in is the USB 3.0. We're gonna put that one in right here. All right, so now that we've got it all wired up, let's go ahead and put the GPU in. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna first check where the GPU is going to rest. So I'm gonna pick this up here, and I'm gonna put it where it's gonna be, right in there. So that means that I need to take the top two bolts out. So over here, as you can see, these two need to come out first. followed by these two plates. So that way I have now slots where the GPU is going to go in. All right. So pop those two out, like so. Now I'm gonna grab the GPU, lean my case over. All right, so now that we're here, Go ahead and set the GPU into the top slot. A nice firm press. And we're locked in place. I'm gonna stand it back up. I'm going to secure the GPU to the back plate here. I'm gonna secure the GPU to the back plate I'm going to secure the GPU here to the back plate. I'm going to do something. I can't get the GPU secured. Last try. I'm going to G secure the GPU to the back plate, like so. There's one, and there's two. I'm gonna remount the guard. And now I just need to feed the power for the GPU through the side here. All right, now all we need to do is plug in to the power supply, hit the power switch, so we have RGB lighting, everything looks good. I'm gonna come over here, press the power button, and we're live. All the fans are going, everything looks good. All right, now that everything is in the case, our machine has fired up. We've gotten a post. 
we are good to go. We're gonna put the side panels back on, and then in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and install Windows, we're gonna fine tune the BIOS, update the drivers, like the NVIDIA driver, and make sure the computer is just fine tuned and ready to go for our video editing projects. Thanks for hanging in here, and I'll see you in the next video.